It's homemade, it's baked fresh, it's piping hot. It is simple sandwich bread. Ladies and gentlemen, join us this week in the kitchen as we share with you the simple sandwich bread recipe that is absolutely delicious and totally foolproof. Seriously, anyone can make this bread. Let's get started. But before we do, I just want to shout out my fellow moms. You work at home moms, you work from home moms, you working moms, you moms. You're the real MVPs because it doesn't matter what you're doing, you're doing something. You are always on. On the good days, on the tough days, you're on. And you are amazing. Children, husbands, If you're watching this right now, I want you to start clapping. Yes, put those hands together for mom. Oh, I'm sorry, did you think I was kidding? I wanna hear your little claps all the way out here in California. Clap in front of you, clap up above your head, clap all around you, and now go give your mama a big hug. She loves you so, so much. Hey, you guys, and welcome back to another episode of I Bake with Baby on Back. Just kidding. (laughs) Welcome back to Hey, It's a Good Life. My name is Natalie, and I am so glad you're here. This is my little sous chef, Ruby, and today we are making some super simple sandwich bread. Join us in the kitchen today as we share with you this super foolproof recipe. So first things first, we need to gather our ingredients because... Me being me, I will inevitably forget something, like that one time I forgot to add salt to the bread, and by that one time, I mean those several times. Yeah, let me tell you, saltless bread is inedible bread. It's seriously that bad. So I've learned to enjoy the process of prepping. A simple stack of nesting bowls helps me live out my Food Network dreams as I measure all of what we need out into those beautiful glass bowls. For this recipe, you will need three cups of flour, one tablespoon of sugar, two teaspoons yeast, one heaping teaspoon fine sea salt, and three tablespoons of unsalted softened butter, along with three quarter cups warm water and half a cup of milk. To get started, you should definitely leave your lens hood slightly crooked so that it's visible in your shot. That is absolutely crucial to this recipe. (laughs) All jokes aside, put that dough hook on your KitchenAid mixer, or if you're mixing by hand, that works too. Whatever you have, it will do. Add your wet ingredients slowly to your mixture. And I emphasize slowly because I've done it too quickly before and I do feel like it affects the bread. So go slow, scrape down the sides as needed. Once your dough comes together and you've given it a chance to knead a little bit, whether you're doing that by hand or with a mixer, it doesn't matter. So long as it looks something like this, at this stage, you're golden. Then it's time to add the butter, slowly but surely again. Here, slow and steady wins the race. So add your butter one tablespoon at a time, again, scraping down the sides of the bowl as needed. It's gonna be a beautiful thing. I know it looks really chaotic and weird and kind of gross right now, but it's going to turn out lovely, I promise. It should eventually look a little something like this, and if you need to scrape down the sides, kind of pick it up off the bottom of the bowl, all of that is totally fine. Your bread is still gonna turn out great, don't worry. I promise this is such a foolproof recipe. Just let it do its thing. Give it a good knead for about two or three minutes, and at the end of the butter adding process, it should look pretty silky, just like this. Then it's time to give the sides of the bowl one last scrape down and set it aside for its first rise. (music) 
Once your dough has doubled in size, it is time to roll this thing out. Making sure to degas it is really important. Actually, I've not done that so well in the past and it does make a difference. So I highly recommend rolling this thing out, punching it down if you feel so inclined, but rolling it out really well is the key in this step. And doing so allows you to degas that bread and ultimately get a pretty fine crumb, which is essentially the air pockets, small, smaller, the better here. The smaller the air pocket, the more tight the crumb, the tighter the crumb, the more sturdy the bread, the sturdier the bread, the more things you can hold in your sandwich for what is sandwich bread. So there you go. Roll it out. Let your baby help you out if they're willing. <laughs> Another thing to note when you're rolling things out, just one direction will do. This is not like baking cookies where you want a big giant circle of dough. You actually wanna keep this more narrow for the rolling process and for the loaf pan. And you'll see what I mean here in just a second. You just, you don't really want it wider than the loaf pan because that means that you're gonna have to tuck it in on the ends. And so just save yourself the work and just roll in one direction, keep it nice and narrow. After the second rise, your dough should have doubled in size. Once again, it is time to bake that bread at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, or if you're like us, just a skosh past the stain on the dial. And if you're also like me, you know, remember to take your pans out before you heat the oven. Pro tip. Once you've baked your bread for about 35 minutes and it's golden brown on all sides, it is time to remove that beautiful loaf from its pan and set it aside on a wire rack to cool. Or you know, if you're like me and you just can't wait to have a slice of beautiful, simple sandwich bread, go ahead and just cut right into it. It might fall apart a little bit, it's okay. Slather some butter on there and call it good. Congratulations, you can now make beautiful sandwich bread. All right, now if you've made it this far, I have a little trivia for you because this has bothered me for a while when baking bread with commercial yeast. Instant yeast does not need time to bloom, whereas active dry yeast needs time to bloom. So if you've ever wondered what the difference is, instant does not need time, active dry does need a little bit of time. That's all there is to it. Oh yeah, also. My heart actually melted a little bit while filming this episode. I want to say thank you so much to those of you guys who have been here following our journey here for the recipes. Of course, you can catch everything on the blog. This recipe will also be available there. And thank you for making this job possible for us. Uh, we just crossed 13,600 subscribers here on YouTube. And I am so grateful and I appreciate each and every single one of you guys. Hope you guys have a great start to your week. Thanks for tuning in today and I'll catch you guys next time.